Good morning and welcome new subscribers, friends, family. Yesterday was a huge day for me. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I stopped by the other place that I had been renting over the winter and the spinach was let go and I collected some seeds. There's a lot of moisture on these so I'll bundle them up and, and hang them, let them dry out. I did way more transplanting and wait till, you see, wait till you see what I did. Yesterday was just huge. So I showed the beautiful butterhead lettuce and the cool nights are really helping the growth out. There's our first baby right there. <laughs> and here's our furry babies, Samson. Sidekick Bella Bear. Hi, Bella Bear. Guten Morgen. Buenos dias. <laughs> Happy as always. Okay. Some more watermelon sprouted. This is the last of the original seed stock. So, four going. I should get a nice seed stock from them. Cilantro is up. And all of uh, the lettuce that's sprouting here, buried seed heads, the ones that I got tired of sifting, are uh, they had been thinned out. But we have some good growth on those. And you know, I thought uh, that little pile of the Love Lies Bleeding was a mistake. But here, there are so many of them. This, I had to have sewn this and just totally blanked on it. But I'm going to be thinning marigolds and uh, unexpectedly lots of amaranth. And for those of you who don't know about the varieties of amaranth, it is a good source of protein for a vegetarian diet. And there I'm getting that close up on just how thick this is with the wildflower mix. All right, you guys ready for what I did? I extended the garden to the other half of the yard. Instead of running that fence line back to the woods, I moved the poles and um, <laughs> almost doubled the garden size. And now I'm even thinking that I'm just gonna keep on pushing this fence line forward so here's another really, really big bed. Like I said, these planks are 16 feet long. So that's gonna border this area right here. I, I cut the wood yesterday. Those big, huge tongue and groove for the side. And um, so here it is. This was the garden, which is a big garden. It's a good sized garden. Uh, and three big beds in here. Fun stuff. Also, I was very excited about seeing the very first of the early Russian flowers come on those cucumber plants. Please excuse my camera work while I juggle the coffee and the fence and the camera and trying to chat. So, the other tub came in from the salvage, the find in the wood, woods, and I am going to plug up a hole and do a rice experiment in there. I have to uh, figure out how to design the little rice mat and start the seeds. Swiss chard went in, came out of the pots because the dogs were just pummeling it. And I'm going to get in on this beautiful site. Now there's even more out. There was just one flower yesterday. And now there's a few. And for those of you who are uh, really interested in knowing about uh, seed propagation, is that I've talked about it. The plants that have the male and female flowers on the same vine and a cucumber and squash are an example of that. 
and they need each other to pollinate. And when these first show up, uh, depending on the timing, most likely you are going to see mostly male flowers. They need a specific amount of daylight to produce both flowers at optimum level. So when you first start seeing your female flowers show up, you can hand pollinate to ensure that they're going to be pollinated because they need the help of our insect pollinating friends. So this bed is absolutely enormous. And last night, like I said at sundown, is when I do all my transplanting. I don't like to stress anything. This section is lettuce. As always, the nicest plants with the biggest leaves and the biggest root systems go in the center and then the little guys go out to the outside. That way if somebody steps into the bed, I'm losing little plants and not my seed stalk and we eat from the outside rim, leaving the center plants to go to seed. This is a beautiful patch of arugula. Same thing you'll notice. Bigger plants on the inside, smaller to the outside. It's just how I like to do it. And like I said, now that I've really, really noticed after the last two, three years, my germination rate is just spectacular. So here we come to the endive. A nice patch of the endive moving right in to New Zealand spinach. And I have not been able to produce the New Zealand spinach seed. Every, it takes a long time for it to go to seed. And I keep getting bounced around. So the plants are nice and mature and I, I had to leave them behind. So what, uh, what else do we have to say here? The, uh, the German foxtail its millet came up and the flax came up in here. And beautiful, beautiful growth on the Hopi squash. There's three in that pot and another one there. And by the looks of this dark stem here, this is going to be a cinnamon basil variety and not the sweet basil. When I was sifting the seeds, I just mixed them and uh, basils will also cross. Now, this is the, uh, took the fence line out, so I'm gonna have to buy or acquire somehow more of the uh, tomato steaks or do a makeshift trellis. Mustard greens that got transplanted are now going into uh, growth stage. Lots of little stuff that you can't really see. Parsley came up and, and some other things. That's the collard bed and the newest tomatoes. Uh, I mean, strawberries looking good next to the tomatoes over here. We were getting really heavy rain, high winds. You're probably paying attention to the weather so you knew that the south got really uh, tore up. So even though the tomatoes are very little, I went ahead and staked them and, and tied them. This is an old t-shirt. I'll have to get like a pillowcase. T-shirts, cotton t-shirts, they usually have a little bit too much give in them and then when the plant gets heavy, uh, it stretches out. So I'll end up retying those when the plant gets heavier. And globe artichokes popped up yesterday. Starting to see after the transplant some growth on the albino bell peppers. More tomatoes. Nice little basil plant in there. The basil is planted sporadically here and there because it'll be uh, let go to seed and it attracts the pollinators very, very quickly to the garden. And once you have pollinators uh, and if they have an ample food supply, they don't stray. 
Right now I'm going to be combating getting some of this stuff to seed without it um, mixing with my neighbor's varieties. I had already spoke to him and, and he's growing a variety of cucumber and watermelon that are different than mine. I'm happy that uh, I got my plants in and started earlier than he did. So the first fruits will be marked that they will be pure. I'll go over and check his to see when his are flowering and do some hand pollinating to ensure it. So the first round of fruit will be pure and marked. The second round, which may have a chance of crossing, uh, when I bag those seeds, they'll also be marked. And then I'll check them the following, uh, the next time I decide to germinate. So this is that the kohlrabi now sprouting up. The soil is so lame that I'm doing way more compost tea than what I normally do. And gorgeous, gorgeous tomatoes. Cardoon. Right, he's missing a leaf. And here we have some okra. And this is the um, winged bean, a dragon winged bean popping up. The bush beans in the other garden are growing way, way faster. This is a false blue indigo, sunflowers, and the Thai elbow gourd. I did a giant golden amaranth back here just for fun. Six, seven feet tall, golden instead of the love lies bleeding vibrant red. I'm thinking that these vines showing up here all along are a uh, Virginia snake. I'll have to uh, check that out and uh, check the uh, root ball. They, they have a big knotty root on them. So, whoa, that's definitely something in there. <laughs> it's not labeled. I don't know what it is. And uh, Sunrise Cosmos, that's going to be a gorgeous, gorgeous flower. Sam, I'm right here. It's okay, buddy. I'm right here. I'm coming out in a minute. So, what else? Here we got, uh, I moved the squash mountains, just like I said I was going to. We have squash. That's the cheerman. Gooseberries. Shamrock squash and more gooseberries, the smaller ones. Now, I told you that that was just too much squash in such a small space. This is disappointing. This is uh, onion from a uh, seed company, and so far, uh, no sprouts. Small seeds, and they typically lose their viability within a couple years, and these are about three years old. So I'm going to probably pull my entire onion collection and plant them all. See what happens. This is more New Zealand spinach and the leeks are just starting to show up, but they are just way, so, way tiny, so I'm not even going to bother to try to pan in on that. This is a bigger New Zealand spinach. This was the first round. And one of the minnows sprouted so far. That's the uh, mystery seed over there. I think it's a turnip. More tomatoes, different variety. That's called a Marion. And thin the endive, still have more work to do. Thin the arugula, still have more work to do. <laughs> the uh, herbs are taking a while to sprout and I'm thinking maybe it's because of the night temperatures dropping. This is one of the most gorgeous specimens that I've seen in the last couple years of my yellow pear tomatoes. That's definitely gonna be a seed baby right there. So far, no sweet potato greens popping up, but they will. All right. Lots more space 
here we are, May. The building is still here, but the truck is gone. So what did I do? I decided to finish off that, that line over there around the bed and extend it down. And where the truck sat, there wasn't any sign of any of the fluids leaking. That was my cue to go ahead and make a nice curvy line all the way down to the shed. I went in really deep here because as you can see, the water erodes right here. So take the water down the hill. Haven't decided what I'm gonna put in the wheelbarrow, but I do have some of the regular soil that's here and then some of my really rich stuff. And there's a squash there. So this is where the bed ended at the cactus. I transplanted some sassafras trees. They don't look very happy right now. Hopefully they'll come back. So this is another nice big, nice big herb bed. My helper, he helps me dig. This had been a previous uh, burn area. So uh, potted plants and medicinal um, and just flowers will go here. There's the other burn area that I flattened out. Pecan tree showed absolutely no signs of the transplant. I love when that happens. And sesame sprouted back here. It's a big plant. You'd be really surprised once you grow sesame, sesame seed, uh, how big the plant is and how few seeds you get. And then I'm thinking, wow, how do they put that stuff all over buns and everything else? This is insanity. This is out in the grass. Broccoli Rob volunteers everywhere, literally everywhere. This is cress and arugula that I had put in here. But all of these very little ones are the broccoli Rob that had been left for seed, and there's only a couple more of those to collect. See how dry they are, yellow, brownish, and that's a small stem, so that'll be labeled to go into uh, a sprouting seed mix. First year asparagus feathering out and getting its little flowers on it as well, and more broccoli, Rob. But anyway, I'm off and running. Today is a big day. I have a vehicle. So I'm going scouting around for the soil and mushroom compost. And I am determined that I will not come back home until I cut a deal and have at least eight to 10 cubic yards being delivered ASAP. There we go, there you have it. The work in progress, the ever-expanding garden, making a slice of uh, paradise, a little Eden in your own backyard. Keep plugging, and I'll talk to you real soon. We're going to have some salad tonight, I can say. Arrivederci.